daffodils. So with the templates that you might have been able to download, we're just going to go either template or use um, use your use your paper that you've got around in the house if you're lucky enough to have some scribbled paper or some sheet music or some map. We can use all sorts of paper. It's very much a playful thing. Daffodils are quite easy flower to replicate and to um, it's a good starting point actually for for any kind of paper flowers so here on the templates as you can see there are a couple of petals that right have a little bit of a squiggly bit at the end and you can exaggerate that or you can make you know just have fun with moving the paper and not the scissors as much as the paper and then you make this little trumpet with it and the inside of daffodils have this really sweet little trumpet and I use my finger to make sure that I can roll it around. Then I squeeze the bottom bit of it so that I've got this little, yeah, the trumpet. I'm just showing you the same thing can go with the with the pink. And you what you can do, if you don't have any coloured paper, you can colour it in or you can use the paper, the templates here. You can either put a little edge to it or you can use some crepe paper. It's the same principle for all the all the daffodils, you know, or, and a lot of flower making has this, the stamen or the centerpiece that really, um, ex um, and so it sort of emphasizes the flower. So the crepe paper here, I'm rolling it around the pa uh, my finger and squeezing it at the far end. So it almost looks like a little beak. And making sure that the trumpet, there's a hole in there in the middle. And you could go wild. You could go a sort of crazy pink. I know daffodils don't look like this in real life, but maybe that's that's a shame. And maybe we should change that around and make them wilder. So I love this vibrant pink or even the soft pink. And I'm stretching out the crepe paper at the end, making it quite easy to um, to cut into it and just do a little sort of edgy, sort of a little, little sort of fluffy end bit and when I roll it around you'll see that it it makes such a beautiful little centerpiece and this is something you can use for a lot of different paper flowers the center bit and then you the crepe paper has a great thing if you don't stretch it out at the bottom it it already does some of the work for you make sure the pointy bit of the wire is is bent down and not going to stick into your fingers and what I suggest you do is that you do several of these so you carry on making these centerpieces, the stamens or the trumpets. And once you've done three or four of them, you're going to get used to making them. You're going to see different colors. It would be nice. I think yellow is is um, is sometimes a flower color that people have a hard time with. But when you mix it with orange and pinks, it has a completely different feel to it. Once you've done that, you wrap some masking tape around it and cover up the wire. Mainly because you don't want to be pricking yourself with the far at the little end bit of the of the wire. And what I find easier is to line the trumpet that you've just done and the wire and then really try to mold in um, the masking tape so you get this wonderful blend from the wire and to the masking tape and to the rest of the flower. You, I've used the templates cutouts here for the petals of the daffodil and you poke a little hole in it. And then this bit is just really take your time and communicate with the trumpet bit. Stick your finger in there and mold it on the other side. Just bend the, use the leaves and really have a, have a um, connection between the paper and the wire. And then to make sure that it really sticks there, put a piece of masking tape around it so that it sticks onto the wire and doesn't suddenly just fall off or the petals roll down the stem. So you've got these, this wonderful nodded daffodil. This is the smaller, the smaller petals from the template. And I'm just doing exactly the same thing, poking through the wire. And then when I get to this bit, I'm just sort of twisting it into place. And the masking tape will also make sure that it grips onto the paper. And then you you make your daffodil nod a little bit. You put the masking tape on the other side. 
to make sure that it doesn't fall off. And this masking tape is quite white, so it doesn't really, it's just, you know, won't notice it very much if you put it on the back of the paper. But if you do have a very yellow masking tape, just put it nicely there so it looks like it's on purpose. And this is for my bright pink one. I'll show you afterwards how to cut up the leaves freehand. Um, so you just squeeze it into its, its place and then you've got this vibrant daffodil. And together with the yellow and the orange and the pinks, it just ends up looking wonderfully happy. <laughs> So I'm just showing you how to cut um, the the petals and I'm using several because it's so thin I'm using quite a lot of different papers. It's also a little bit of a speed thing because it just means that once you if you get them right you really want to have several of the same petal. So I cut out a circle a rough circle to begin with and I put my thumb in the middle to center it and that's where I'm going towards and I'm just cutting out a, almost like a v-shaped a wide V shape and then I'm going towards the middle again with my scissors and then I'm going out towards the end, the edge of it. Sometimes it can be easier to think of the petals as what you cut off rather than what you're cutting into. So if you see the V shape on between the petals, that can be a way of seeing the petals better Again, it takes a little bit of practice, but it's it, there's a wonderful feeling of free hand of just cutting out of from your imagination. You see the shape and when you get towards the end, you're always like, "Ooh, will I fit in how many petals here? One or two. And sometimes there's a very small petal. Sometimes you've got it a little bit wrong. But again, you can twist the petals. And here's one that where the paper just wasn't l long enough. So I'm just cutting a little bit of a pointed petal at the end and um, what you'll see here now is that you can twist the petals a little bit so that they're not lying exactly on top of each other which makes it again very gratifying and easier for it to get a real look of a flower and I'm just taking my time to sort of grip onto the orange centerpiece and then I've got this little sweet daffodil and you can use matte paper and you can use all sorts of paper. Now we're just going to put the floral tape around the stem to give it, I mean, I wouldn't say a realistic look, but it's nice to cover up the, the wire, or at least I think it is. And I'm wrapping the, the floral tape around first, just like a crossover. Once I can feel that it's gripping, I pull one hand and stretch out the floral tape and twist it and it becomes again it's a little bit meditative meditative and um, get a little kick out of it when it works and when it doesn't work which it quite often doesn't then uh, don't fret just start start again and use another piece and you do get very sticky fingers which is why my hands never look very clean when I'm doing flowers because they it takes two seconds and then they're then they're back to looking messy. So if you are going to make a bouquet of paper flowers for someone and you're going out with them in the same evening, try to make them beforehand so you've got time to wash your hands really thoroughly afterwards. I think the icing on the cake is very much the leaves and um, daffodils have these long pointed uh, grass-like leaves almost and they, they really add to the illusion of... Um, of a, of a bouquet of flowers of daffodils. So I'm cutting up quite a few of them and I'm placing them in twos and wrapping some wire around it. And I'm using the far end as well so I don't have too much wire in the of the whole bouquet. And just squeezing it together there and rolling it around. Oop. And then you can use masking tape with the crepe paper. I don't actually always think it is an advantage or you don't really need to with the leaves, especially because you know that they're there. But again, I'll let you feel what's what depending on the paper, depending because you can use all sorts of green paper. You don't have to use. You can use map as well. I, I sometimes use old map 
green map pieces like they did with the petals on one of the daffodils in the middle. And then I build up my bouquet. And a bouquet like this took me about an hour. So I'm quite used to making them, but have fun. And uh, if it takes you two, if it takes you three hours, then um, it'll be quicker and easier next time. I promise you. Have fun. <laughs>